Uh, besides the drought, uh, we've also had uh, a very strong attack uh, from Paul Amiwem. If you're deciding to venture into horticulture, you have to be willing to, 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 to face challenges that come with market fluctuations. Uh, per square meter of land, I believe the best returns will come from horticulture. So guys, we're in the maize field. So what are we looking at here? Um, this is a green millies patch. Uh, this is SC727 and so uh, it's one of the best varieties to grow as green millies, 120 days, um, 90 days actually, wow. um, to, to get to maturity. Um, what's fascinating and what's, what's interesting about it is the crop size. Regardless of the drought that we've had, you can see we've got um, an almost a 30 centimeter crop um, on the crop within this drought. Of course, yes, we've been irrigating, but the crop size is quite big. It makes marketing a bit easy for us. In a few weeks, we'll be selling. Uh, this helps our cash flow and then and, and, and gets us, um, you know, gets greases the, the wheels of, of the farm and, and, and keeps us going. So, this is you, you sell it as it is like green maize, you just say green maize. Yes, we do. We sell it as green mealies, um, but you don't sell everything. Uh, some of the cobs remain when they remain, you let them dry and then you, you can sell those as commercial maize or we can use those, those as stock feed. Um, the challenge is you have had. Uh, besides the drought, uh, we've also had uh, a very strong attack uh, from four armywem. I think because in the area we're the only ones with a green field, so I think uh, we, we're then attracting the whole the army. Space. The whole army is coming to us. Other than that, uh, we haven't had too many challenges pertaining to uh, to this particular crop. This is a rotational crop. This particular plot is in its rotational phase. So this is cauliflower and red cabbages. I have a love for cauliflower and red cabbages. I would want to explore more of that. Um, so yeah, this is just for rotation. Uh, we get this out of the way. We keep. Uh, we then get back to our sweet potato program oh. after harvesting this. So how big is this plot? Like, uh, this is about a third of an hectare, the whole block. So we've oh. got red cabbages, we've got cauliflower, we've got a bit of tomato, we've got a bit of beans. Um, but these are just, um, like I said, just for rotation. Yeah, horticulture. You know, why horticulture? It it. It, 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 you've got um, the potential to harvest maybe three or four times in a, yeah. in a single year um, and the returns are very good. Per square, uh, per square meter of land, I believe the best returns will come from horticulture. Um, you know, other, other cropping endeavors require a lot of land um, to be able to get as much return as you would get um, on horticulture. So small space, high returns. That's why I would choose horticulture over any other cropping um, system. So is that profitable? Yes, it is. I, I believe horticulture is profitable. I believe it's lucrative. You also get to control how you sell your product. You also get to, you have a bit of control over your price as well. I know farmers are price takers and not price givers most of the time, but it, you've got a bit more control than you'd have for say tobacco. You just take it to the market, you get the price that yeah. you're given. So there's a bit of control there. So for someone who would want to venture into horticulture, what are the challenges are they willing to face? Um, if, if you, if you're deciding to venture into horticulture, you have to, um, you have to be willing to, 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 to face challenges that come with market fluctuations. Oh. You don't always control, um, supply on the market. So it's, it's a supply and demand sort of situation. Um, my, my encouragement is plant slightly off season, just slightly off so that when, you know, when there's shortage of supply, you get the yeah, best prices. Demand, really. The other challenges that, that, that come with horticulture are around planning and, you know, just plan your resources, uh, plan your, 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 your irrigation, learn as much as you can about the crop. Start small and then expand from there. Understand the crop that you are that you're trying to grow. And then any horticulture plant, any horticulture crop that you grow makes a lot of money. You have to find a crop that you love doing, uh, one that you love eating, one that you love uh, producing, one that you love seeing grow. Uh, if you can find that, I think your, your chances of success in horticulture production will be high. You can grow anything. You can grow carrots, you can grow onion, you can grow. But you have to decide on the basis of what you love to grow. Because all those things pay almost the same amount of money per hectare. You know, my brother, you are talking about, you know, being educative enough when you want to venture into something. Earlier you said you didn't. Okay, did you go to school for this or you just learn along the way? Um, I'm a self-taught self, self -taught farmer. Oh. Um, I, I didn't necessarily go to school for, for farming. I did a farming related uh, course, but most of, most of the farming that I do is actually self-taught. I spend a lot of time reading, researching, talking to industry experts and, you know, 
just trying to find out what's working, what's not. I'm a passionate reader. I, I read a lot. Um, if you if you were to ask me any farming related question, you'd be surprised at the amount of knowledge that I have from from the region. But it's just um, it's it's just it's just passion, and and uh, I'm self taught. I'm 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 a forestry professional by 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 education. Yeah. But I, I I just grew to love farming and and grew to to realize that you have to read, you have to learn, because uh, there's a knowledge gap um, that exists in the field. Yeah. You know, I respect you. Let's talk about uh, cauliflower, right? I see you have tied this one. Yeah. Why do you do this? So the best prices that you get on your cauliflower curds are for the very white ones. Oh. In fact, if it turns yellow from sunburn, yeah. uh, from most distributors, they'll actually reject it. The best uh, price is for very white, unscathed cauliflower. So the best way to do that is to make sure when the curds start coming along, you just close it up so that no sun gets in contact with, with the curd in the middle. So you have to tie every single every plant? Every single plant. We follow up and tie as, as the curds come. We do this exercise every morning. Um, it's, it's, you know, the precision farming aspect. You have to know each and every plant by name. Wow. So you, <laughs> ultimately, you have to name this and then call this one Lucy, call this one Tawanda, call that, that Tawanda oh, Sungwa yeah. You know, you, you have to know your you plants know by it. name. That's the sort of level of detail that you have to, um, that you have to give. It's like taking care of, of, of a baby. Exactly. So, you know, what are the challenges that, you know, you have faced in, in, in this, in, in, in cauliflower? Um, this, is, um, this is actually my second cauliflower crop. Oh. The first one, we didn't do this. And the whole field was nice and big. The curds were nice. We produced them very well, but they were all yellow oh. because of sunburn. Took them to a distributor that we normally sell to and ended up losing out in terms of the market. And we then had to take them to Bari for a compromised price. And we learned our lesson that way. So now we're just making sure um, we, we, we cover them. The second challenge that we faced with cauliflower is a variety issue. And we still grew the same variety, but I've also learned that there are better varieties than the one that I'm actually growing. So we're going to move into better hybrids now, now that I've, I've gotten a chance. Which is something that I also want to encourage farmers. I also learned this recently at a, at a field day. I went to a field day from one of these people and, and realized that I've been growing the wrong variety. Not, not wrong, but I've been growing a compromised variety. There are better varieties that I can also grow. So again, it comes back to knowledge. Research, find out what is out there get into these seed producers' houses and ask a lot of questions and be a nuisance. And then you get as much information as you can so that when you get into your, into your farming venture, you, you get to uh, make the right decisions. You know, I like the fact that, you know, you are not afraid or too proud to learn new things. Oh, yeah. It's like you are like, okay, besides me being an expert in this and this and this and that, I still have a long way to go. Oh, yeah. Uh, change is dynamic. The, the moment you stop learning, you, you stop growing. That's what I think. Learn as much as you can and you will grow. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's really part of our growth strategy. Learn, network, and ultimately, I believe, we will grow. Um, our intention is to export within the next 18 to 24 months, export something. Oh. Um, it looks like sweet potatoes first and then we'll you know, grow into other areas. And so we need to learn. As, uh, we, we have a lot to learn. Um, it's... it's I believe I'm still young and there's room for a lot of learning to, yeah. to so, happen. So, <coughs> why red cabbages? Um, red cabbages are consistent in terms of price. Yeah. Uh, that's the first thing. They're very consistent in terms of price. You hardly find them falling below 50 cents. The worst price I've gotten for, for, for white cabbages has been about 10 cents. Um, that's the worst price I've gotten for, wow. for, for the white version of cabbages. So, reds um, have been consistent at above 50 cents. That's the first thing. And as you can see, these head sizes look small. But for red cabbages, they're actually large enough to, to fetch. We're actually selling these at 70 cents right now, oh. uh, if, regardless of their size. So that's one of the one of the factors. If you've got a, um, say for example, for lack of a better way to put it across, if you've got a failed crop of white cabbages and their heads turn out that small, you're not going to sell them. You end up feeding your cattle with them. But red cabbages, small red cabbages have a market. So that, that also makes the decision to grow them very easy. It means there's very little margin for error. Um, because oh, well, there's more margin for error with red cabbages, you know. Yeah. So and 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 prices are good regardless. Um, right now there's no red cabbage in the market. I'm selling to one distributor who's who's uh, we're happy to absorb whatever produce I've got. Um, regardless of what it looks like, I I went with my samples and 
you know, thinking maybe I'm going to get a compromise view and they're very happy with them. But I wasn't happy with the crop because it looks yeah. a bit small. Uh, the drought uh, has given us a bit, uh, you know, a few moisture challenges here and there. But um, they're happy to take the product as it is and, and they, we're getting a good price for it. So red cabbages, cauliflower, how long do they take to, to harvest? Um, the varieties that we've got on the farm right now take about 85 days. Okay. Um, especially in the season that we're in, because we're getting into the colder season now, they'll take about 85 days. But, you know, the other varieties that take about 65 days. And you know, that's what we're moving into. I would like, let's talk about market. How does it work? Because you were like, the last option was Mbari. It is mm. always the last option, right? Yeah, for us, Mbari is, is, is our buyer of last resort. Okay. Um, because... They don't usually offer the best prices. Uh, the prices are compromised. There are a lot of middlemen in Barrio. Yes. You know, there are a lot of middlemen around it, and it's difficult to really get to the end user from Bari. So you want to, to, to reduce your chain of supply as much as possible and try to get directly to the consumer uh, that much. My, my best place for, for selling has been uh, distributors. Um, the reason why people don't go to distributors is because they have a quality demand that they have. Uh, by distributors, I'm talking about the guys that you see with labels in the supermarket. Um, <laughs> if it's okay to mention names, yes, yeah, you've yes. got your Wills Groove as a distributor, you've got Picasso, uh, Favco, Fresh Pro, uh, Tinorima, Anutipa, you know, all those. They're open for everyone. They're open for everyone. But um, Valley Fresh. The reason why most people do not go to, to, to distributors is because they're strict when it comes to the sort of quality that they require from the farmer. They don't play. They don't play. So what then happens is uh, people shun away from them because there's a lot of grading that happens, there's a lot of rejection that happens. Uh, but I take it as a challenge. If I can produce quality good enough for a distributor, it means even when the market is in flood, the quality that I have will not give me challenges selling even to the lower end. But, yes. Um, so I prefer to go to distributors and learn those systems. I think they'll get me closer to the export goal. Because it, I'll, I'll improve my systems. Because that's that's the goal. The goal is not to, to just sell in, in, in Zim, but to also export. Export. Yeah. And so distributors are, you know... It, that, they, they, that. They, they push my standards uh, to, you know, to that level. And also even volumes. They don't, you know, they want consistent supply. They want a bit more in terms of volumes. And something that we're also trying to work on. The only reason why we, we, we harvested this particular plot late is because we're waiting for the round to, 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 to come along. Yeah. So that we, you know, it becomes a continuous chain of supply. And then when we start supplying, we don't stop. Can you eat these? You can. The, the, one other thing that, that I learned, um, I remember in the 90s, around 1998, my parents grew a crop of cauliflower and broccoli Okay. Uh, in a field that's, that, that's up there. They sold it, didn't get much return for it, um, nah, for reasons that I can't disclose, but they didn't get much return for, for, for that crop for, for, for one reason or the other. But what then happened is, because... You harvest the curd, yes, and then all this gets left behind. So my father and my mother, being very innovative, decided they're going to make mfushwa with this dried veggies. Oh, they made that mfushwa. That mfushwa pushed them back to profitability. So you're saying, when when the last time did you put you know um, pesticides? Because you know, is, it, is it okay if I if I take a leaf? Um, I'll, I'll have to check with the manager. When? Oga pesticide spray in cauliflower. I am stronger. <laughs> so, okay. The tender, the better. Oh, the tender, the better. Yeah. I'm <laughs> G D six. So, guys, you can actually eat these leaves. Yeah, they're very edible. The dried version of these leaves is of these leaves is very nice. Um, uh, among um uh, fushwa, which is what we call it in Shona in vernacular. Mm -hmm. uh, among all leaves that, that come from, from dried veggies, mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would rate them this way. The first one is cowpeas, Minyemba. That's my number one. The second one is Mutine uh, from your blackjack. And yeah, then this yeah. comes third. Wow. Cabbages, rape, and everything else comes after you know, It this. actually tastes better. It's nice. It's, it's very nice. You can even, you know, just fry it and eat it as a kale. Um, unfortunately, we can't harvest these before we harvest our cauliflower. Yes, yes, Because yes. we, need, we need, you know, we need that cover. Um... But other than that... So you can make money two different ways. With this. 
Yeah, and, and we're definitely going to have this. I just have to make a decision. If I'm going to go the silage route with this, or if I'm going to dry the leaves. We've also got a dryer back there. Uh, some innovation that we try to do with a vegetable dryer. If whenever we need to dry veggies or anything, we just put I would them like in to dry. see that. Yeah, we're, like we're, going to through, we're going through it and you'll see it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Let's go to...